Over the next 40 hours, I'm going to be traveling alone to the other side of the world, starting in Tampa, Florida, and finishing in Bali, Indonesia. I'm so excited, I wish I could scream right now. Four airplanes, five airports, and an entirely new continent are waiting for me, so buckle up, because I'm taking you guys along for the ride. It's not always fun to fly for 40 hours. I don't know why I thought it would be. Okay, it's the night before I leave. I will be up in the air in less than 12 hours, which is so exciting, but I'm definitely feeling quite nervous, which I just wanted to share that with you guys because I've obviously been traveling for years now and traveling solo into other countries is no stranger to me, but I think there's always like a little bit of like nerves, whether it's excitement or a little bit of anxiety or a little bit of both. It's about 10 p.m. I'm waking up around 6.30. I'm so excited. We're going to Bali, but this is gonna be the most insane travel day of my life. I have a feeling, so let's do this together. You're gonna miss him so much. I love you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you should just come. I'm a little nervous, <laughs> but I'm really excited. <sighs> All right, I switched to the 40 liter Osprey Fairview for reasons that I will explain in the airport. <laughs> a very dramatic day yesterday, but I like it. I'm so excited. First stop is New York. So I'm flying from Tampa International Airport to JFK on JetBlue. And before we went on board, I converted my Osprey backpack into a little duffel to make it easier to store. And yeah, it was a super easy, chill two and a half hour flight. And before I knew it, we were in New York City. So I am officially in the JFK airport and I have eight hours until my flight to Frankfurt. So I'm gonna need to find some way to entertain myself over the next few hours. So I have a few ideas. So apparently this is like a 1960s themed hotel and it looks really cool. So I'm excited to go check it out and kill some time. Okay, this is so cool already, but I'm super hungry. So first things first, let's go find somewhere to eat real quick. I got a crazy panini. I'm so freaking hungry right now. So my initial plan for my layover was I was actually gonna go into the city and hang out with some of my friends that live there, but it would have ended up being like a three hour round trip ordeal, plus super expensive. I decided to kind of stay in the airport, but I want to try and find the coolest and most fun things to do while I'm here. So I'm gonna eat and then show you guys around a little bit. So if you're a fitness junkie and you want to get a little workout in while you're here, you can actually get a day pass to their gym. And apparently, I think it's like 10,000 square feet or something insane. Okay, this hotel is the place for any airline junkies out there. There are literally like museums and all of these historical things all over the hotel, as well as like actual planes and artifacts. It's pretty sick. I think I can potentially go in the plane. I think there's a bar in the plane. Let's go figure it out. I'm literally the only person out here. <laughs> I am walking under the Connie right now. <laughs> under the propeller. This thing is huge! I just asked someone and they said that it opens at 4, I believe, to the public. But I may still be around here at 4, so maybe I will want to come have a little happy hour in the plane. That'd be pretty sick. So far, this has been a very entertaining experience. I still have to go check out the pool, so stay tuned. But if you want to come to the TWA airport, it's right outside of Terminal 5, which is where JetBlue is. And it's a great way to kill some time, so far. So this is the rooftop pool at the TWA hotel and you can either come up here, if you're a non-guest, you can pay $50 and stay up here, hang out the whole day, have access to the bar, um, and if you're a guest, you just pay $25 for the day. So a little pricey, but what are you going to expect at a nice hotel at an airport, but you get this view while you're in the infinity pool. It's pretty sick. I'm like low-key tempted, to be honest. <laughs> So I'm 
back at the airport and I actually just checked my bag, which if you noticed from earlier, my backpack is a carry-on, like my main backpack. And the reason I did that was so I could avoid checking my bag and all the fees and everything that kind of comes with checking the bag all the extra time. But I had literally no idea until yesterday that Singapore Airlines only lets you have one like main bag on board. So my camera bag, it's so heavy. My camera bag counts towards that allotted one bag on board. I'm usually used to, you're allowed to bring one carry-on on board plus a personal item. This is usually my personal item. It fits underneath the seat in front of me. So that's just something to be aware of if you are flying Singapore Airlines. You can only bring one bag on board, including like a personal item like this. So that's one thing to know. The other thing is that depending on the time that you're watching this, Indonesia does require you to be fully vaccinated to enter the country. And that includes having a booster at least 14 days before you arrive in Indonesia. So make sure that you are fully vaccinated and boosted in all the things. Yeah, I'm pretty tired and I haven't even gotten on my first flight. I am about to get on my flight to Frankfurt. And then from there we go to Singapore and then from there we go to Bali. So it's about to be the biggest leg of the trip is beginning. So I had some time to kill before I boarded my flight to Frankfurt. So I wanted to show you what I brought so I could still feel like a human on these really long flights. I brought a neck pillow, an eye mask, and a sleeping pill. I also brought a bunch of toiletries. So I brought some face wash, face moisturizer, body lotion, Vaseline, a toothbrush, and some toothpaste. Let's go wash our face. much as I wish I was sitting in first class I'm back in economy so we have a pillow a blanket a little cup holder and a good amount of space to store your stuff which is nice on a really long flight there's also a tray table and a TV I don't know why I didn't show that um, and a place to charge your phone although this did not work and I decided to get some red wine to make myself tired because I really wanted to sleep and I had some cheese veggie pasta for dinner okay so I'm in Frankfurt for my super short layover and gonna be honest I am really not doing too hot that last flight was the worst flight I've ever had in my entire life it was only seven hours but I was in the middle seat I couldn't recline because the guy behind me was I don't know his legs were in the way I maybe slept like an hour and I was so tired I'm still so tired and you know when you like get up too early or like in the middle of the night and put the lights on like you know that jet lag feeling I just got off I was so nauseous like insanely nauseous I'm still super nauseous I got a coke and some pretzels of course spill the pretzels all over the airport floor it's been a lovely time so far here in Frankfurt but I looked at my boarding pass and my seat was another middle seat and this next flight is even longer it's nine hours so I went and asked and they had one more window seat available so I just switched thank the Lord but I'm gonna go head to my gate now we're going to Singapore next and I really hope I can sleep this this flight oh my god <laughs> this just happens sometimes it's not always fun to fly for 40 hours i don't know why i thought it would be i cannot believe i'm about to board a 12 hour flight but i did get a window seat so that really helped with the overall experience and dinner was actually really good it was like this mushroom veggie pasta can't complain and then i watched the second wakanda movie which was pretty good if you ask me and then it was time to go to sleep and it actually worked out really well because this ended up being the same time as night in bali so hopefully that helps with jet lag breakfast was not very good I'm not gonna lie but here we are arriving in Singapore I'm so excited I've always wanted to come to this airport it's consistently ranked as one of the best in the world it has a rooftop pool a butterfly garden the world's largest indoor waterfall and a few other really cool things and the ride on the air tram to the other terminal was so beautiful at sunrise I definitely need to visit Singapore at some point okay I'm officially in Singapore I literally am like running to my gate right now we landed like 15 minutes before I have to board yeah that flight was so much better even than like the seven hour one, even though it was 12 hours, I feel very rested, which is lovely. I was actually able to recline my seat and I was in the window seat as you saw, which makes a huge difference. So I think that'll actually help with jet lag, the fact that I slept more on that flight. So yeah, I'm gonna go find my gate and get on this new flight to Bali, my last flight of this crazy travel day. This airport is actually the most beautiful place. I think I'm gonna have to plan a longer layover on my next trip back to the States because there's like a waterfall in this airport. It's like super world renowned. So I'm kind of sad I don't have more time, but it'll be worth it to get to Bali, but I definitely need to see this airport at one point.
So the flight out of Singapore was actually so cool. I believe here we are flying over the Singapore Strait and looking at all the cargo ships just lining the waters was so freaking cool. And to top everything off, the breakfast on this flight was really good actually. And honestly, Singapore Airlines is fantastic. The flight attendants are so sweet. But here we are, just a two hour flight heading into Bali and I'm just so beyond excited to be here. It feels so surreal. We're here. I'm so excited, I wish I could scream right now. This is Wida. Hi. <laughs> he Hi. is welcoming me here to Bali. Yay. I'm very excited. Yeah. So we're gonna head to my co-living now. Okay, so I am officially in Bali. This is the most surreal thing. I'm getting such good vibes. So over the next few months, I'm gonna be sharing literally everything with you guys. So make sure you're subscribed. The drive from the airport to where I'm staying now at Draper's Startup House was about an hour. The traffic is pretty insane here in Bali, but this co-living is just north of Chenggu in an area called Dalung. So far, I'm really liking it. I'll show you a bit more of it in the next video, but my driver was so sweet. He actually works with Trova Trip, which is the company that I'm working with to host my group trip in a couple weeks. And he gave me a full lay of the land of Bali on our way to the co-living, which was really, really great. From what I've heard, the locals here are just the kindest, sweetest people. And so far, I'm definitely experiencing that. So I'm super happy to be here, happy to be done with a 40 hour travel day. But as always, thank you guys so, so much for watching this video and get excited for this new Bali series because I am so pumped. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.